Hello everyone, welcome to episode 9. So today what we're going to be doing is getting these mesh chunks off in the distance to be drawn with a lower resolution than those closer to the viewer. So as we move our viewer around, we want these to sort of dynamically change their resolution uh, based on the distance from the viewer. So let's head over to the Endless Terrain script. I'm just going to come down to the bottom of the script here and create a new class called something like Level of Detail Mesh. So each terrain chunk is going to have an array of these level of detail meshes. And what this class is responsible for is just for fetching its own mesh from the map generator. So we're going to want to have a public mesh object in here, just call that mesh. And then we can also have a public bool to keep track of whether or not we've requested the mesh yet. So has requested mesh. And finally, we want to know if we've received the mesh yet. So public bool just has mesh. Um, not finally, in fact, the other thing that we still want is an integer for the level of detail of this uh, current mesh. So then we can have a constructor, public level of detail mesh. And this can just take in the level of detail that we want. So we can say this dot level of detail, referring to the one defined in this class, is equal to that parameter. All right. And then we can have a public void so that we can tell the class that it needs to request its mesh. Um, since we're only going to be requesting the specific level of detail mesh when it's actually required. So uh, let's call this request mesh taken map data and we can start off by saying we have now requested our mesh so set that to true and then we can say map generator dot request mesh data we're going to pass in the map data we've been given and then we need to pass in a callback as well so let's just make a another method over here called on mesh data received taking in some mesh data. And we can just pass that new method in as our callback. Okay, so once we receive the mesh data, we're going to want to set our mesh object equal to mesh data dot create mesh. And we can now say that has mesh is true. Now, obviously, we want to pass the level of detail into the request mesh data method so that it knows what level of detail we want. So let's just change things around in the map generator. Uh, at the moment, we've got this level of detail variable up here, but that's only being used for when we're drawing the map in the editor. And in fact, I'm going to um, I'm going to change its name just to reflect that. So I'll call this maybe editor preview level of detail, something like that, just so we don't get confused now when we add a uh, a integer called level of detail to our request mesh data method. And we're going to want to add that in the mesh data thread as well. And just pass it in when we create this delegate. So add level of detail in there. And then instead of using the editor preview level of detail, we'll pass in the level of detail that we've been given. All right, so we should be able to save that now and come back here and pass in level of detail. Okay, so I'm going to now want to have a public struct called level of detail info. And what this is going to define is, first of all, the level of detail, uh, that should be an integer. And for that level of detail, we'll want to know a float for the sort of distance with, within which that level of detail is active. So I'll call this the visible distance threshold. So essentially, um, once the viewer is sort of outside of that visible distance threshold, then it will uh, switch over to the next level of detail, a sort of lower resolution version. And uh, we're going to want this to show up in the inspector, so I'm just going to add system.serializable. And we can now create a public array 
of these level of detail infos. Call this my detail levels. Let's just save and quickly set this up on the map generator. Got a error here. What is this about? Oh, okay, so in the last episode, of course, we generated the mesh inside of the terrain chunk class uh, just so that we could test that everything was working. So we can basically just delete all of that now. So save and everything is working. So let's go into our detail levels. I'll just make three of them for now. And I don't know, I'll just set these to one, two, and three. We can fiddle with that later. 200, 400, and uh, 600. So then uh, let me just delete this line as well, actually. Uh, the max view distance is no longer necessarily 450. In fact, it's whatever value is last in the detail levels array. So let's change that to a static variable so that we can change its value at runtime. I'm just going to put it under the detail levels. Um, and then we can say the max view distance is now equal to detail levels. We want the last element, so detail levels dot length minus one and say dot visible distance threshold. So now we want to pass the level of detail info array to our terrain chunks. So let's just add this somewhere in the constructor, level of detail info array, detail levels. And I'm also just gonna copy that over here. And then at the start of the constructor, we can just say this dot detail levels is equal to the detail levels we've been given. And we want to pass that in when we create a new terrain chunk object, of course. So pass in detail levels. All right. So next we want to create an array for our level of detail meshes. And then we're going to want to create a new array with that. So level of detail meshes is equal to a new level of detail mesh array with a size that matches the number of detail levels we've been given. So just detail levels dot length. And then we're going to want to loop through all of those. So four into i equals zero, i less than detail levels dot length, i plus plus. We're going to want to create a new level of detail mesh. So level of detail meshes i is equal to a new level of detail mesh. And we want to pass in the level of detail. So that will be um, detail levels i dot level of detail. OK, so next, when we receive the map data, we're going to want to store it. So let's create a map data variable. I'll just call that map data. And just for convenience, a little bool uh, map data received. So on map data received, we can say this dot map data is equal to the received map data. And our bool map data received is equal to true. All right, so then when we're updating the terrain chunk, we're going to want to look at the distance uh, of the viewer from the nearest edge and compare that with the distance threshold of each of the uh, detail levels to determine which one we should be displaying. So let's say if visible, then we can create an int level of detail index starts at zero and we're going to do a little for loop for into i equals zero i less than the uh, detail levels dot length minus one i'll explain why we don't have to look at the last one in a moment and then just say i plus plus if the viewer distance from the nearest edge is greater than detail levels i dot visible distance threshold that means that our level of detail index should be the next one on. So level of detail index is equal to i plus one. Otherwise, if it's not greater than it, then this is the correct level of detail index and we can break out of the loop. So uh, the reason we don't have to look at the last one is because that will be the case where this visible bool is actually false as the viewer distance from nearest edge will be greater than the maximum view distance. All right, so 
we now have the level of detail index that we should be displaying, but we'd like to keep track of what the previous level of detail index was so that we don't have to worry about updating anything if it's just remained the same. So somewhere up at the top here, let's create an int previous level of detail index. And I'm just going to set that equal to negative one to start with, just so that it's impossible for this to be equal to that the first time round, so it has to update. And then we'll say if the level of detail index is not equal to the previous level of detail index, then the level of detail mesh that we want to be working with is the one from our level of detail meshes array with an index of the current level of detail index. Okay, so if that level of detail mesh has a mesh, then we'll want to set our current mesh, so mesh filter dot mesh, to the level of detail mesh. Okay. Otherwise, if the level of detail mesh has not yet requested a mesh, so should add a not here. If it hasn't yet requested a mesh, if it has, of course, it's fine. We'll just wait for it to receive the mesh and then we'll set it. But if it hasn't requested a mesh, then we're going to want to say level of detail mesh dot request mesh and pass in the map data. All right, and then only if we're successful in setting the mesh, will we say that the previous level of detail index is equal to the current level of detail index. Now, obviously, all of this is only worth anything if we've actually received the map data. Um, so if we haven't, we don't need to bother with it. So I'm just going to enclose this all in one giant if statement. If map data received, then do the stuff. Okay. Let's save and give us a quick try. Um, the first level of detail should actually be level zero, I've just realized. Um, so let's enter play mode. And that looks good. You can see these are slightly lower resolution. We'll be able to see this better if we change our shading mode to shaded wireframe. That makes it clearer. Um, I'd like these around the edges to be uh, even lower resolution, so we just increase the level of detail. It feels a little bit weird increasing the level of detail to get a lower detail mesh, but it appears to be the convention in Unity to have it this way around. Anyway, that's looking pretty good. So one thing I'd still like to do is to not have all of the chunks updating every frame. Uh, what we could have is some sort of threshold distance that the viewer has to move before we bother updating them. So I might create up here a const float and call something descriptive like viewer uh, move threshold for chunk update. Quite a long variable name, but I think it gets the point across. Set that to something like 25. And then I'm just going to copy this, create a, another const float called square viewer move threshold for chunk update and set that equal to uh, this one squared. Just doing this because, as most of you are probably aware, always getting the square distance of something is quicker than getting the actual distance, because then you don't have to use the square root operation. So if we keep track of the viewer position old, we can then say, if the viewer position old minus the current viewer position dot square magnitude, the square distance between the two, in other words, if that is greater than the square move threshold for chunk update, only then will we update the vis visible chunks. And we'll also, of course, want to set the viewer position old equal to the current viewer position. And then since this might not evaluate to true at the start of the game, 
we'll just want to uh, make sure that we update the visible chunks in the start method so that those first ones do get drawn. Um, this also gives us another problem if we just save this and press play. So you can see that since the terrain chunks are no longer being updated every frame, uh, we're going to have to manually call update when we receive the map data and also when we receive the mesh data. So what we're going to want to have in the level of detail mesh class is a callback to the update of the terrain chunk. So let's say system.action, call this the update callback. And then in the constructor, we'll take one of these in as well. System.action update callback. Set this dot callback equal to the callback we've been given. And then when we receive the mesh data, we'll say call the update callback. Okay, so now when we um, when we're creating all of these level of detail meshes in the constructor of our terrain chunk, we're just going to want to also pass in, along with the level of detail, our update terrain chunk uh, method. And then we're also going to want to automatically call the update terrain chunk when we receive the map data. Okay, so now if we go into Unity and press play, Everything should be working as normal, but now the performance will be a little bit better because we're not updating every frame. Great, so let's just quickly get textures working on there. Uh, so we can say, uh, where's the this method that I was just in here? We can say texture2d texture is equal to texture generator dot texture from color map, pass in the map data color map. And then we can get the width and the height from the map generator. Those will both just be the chunk size. And then we just say mesh renderer dot material dot main texture is equal to the texture. Let's try that out. Press play and I'll just go into shaded mode. So we can see we've, we're getting the texture nicely. Uh, it's just, as before, the same thing repeated over and over. So let's very quickly fix that by going into the map generator and making the, uh, the request map data take in a vector2 center. And we'll want to pass that in here as well, vector2 center, pass that in through the delegate. Sorry, that should be vector two up there. And then when it generates the map data, it will pass in that center variable. So generate map data will take in vector two center. And over here, when we're creating the noise map, we'll just say create it at center plus offset. So now over here in the draw map and editor, we're going to have to fix this as well. We can just pass in vector two dot zero by default. Okay, so save that, go back to the endless terrain, and when we're requesting our map data, we'll just pass in the, uh, the position of this chunk. All right, so that should be a little bit less repetitive now. Um, this is still not lining up perfectly. We'll worry about that in the next episode. Until then, cheers.